rise, I just is vital. Let me help with my rival. Me that way, my type. Defeated death revival. When talking Jesus, no thank you. Oh, Jesus, his word is final. an opportunity to be the first speaker in the, in the new year in your, congr in your uh, uh, meeting. I'm really pleased to, to be with you today and uh, I want to uh, express how, how 
pleased I am to uh, share whatever I have in, in, my, in my heart, which I think is going to be useful for, uh, for you throughout your life. <clears throat> Among the many things we have done, uh, this morning we have all been involved in a similar act. No matter where we were, but we all, we all did a similar thing. This is, this act was, we chose to do something. So we have made a decision using different techniques, different, uh, our own feeling or thought, we have made a decision. We may be forced to make that decision, but we made a decision. So today I want to look at choice in general, and then I will be specifically uh, uh, related to our, our situation or your situation. So it is, it is about choice that I'm going to, to, to talk to, to you. A free choice is any choice made from a choice list. Choice is an economic term embedded with demand and supply. Philosophers like Plato and others also have written about choice. And so choice is something that we live with it. We choose. We do things because we have chosen. The standard choice model, this is, this is in, in mathematics, in the statistics, so there is an agent over here, and therefore, and there is also a choice set, and then you choose, you choose uh, under different criteria, one of the items, two of the items, whatever is, is, is required. So there is a, a standard choice model. There is a standard choice model. Everybody has to do that. What criteria do they use? It doesn't matter. It depends on the individual. So we, we're going to discuss, we're going to, I'm going to share the importance of choice in our lives. From the Christian point of view, the scripture teaches that our God has, a give, has given humans the permission to make a free choice. And you see this in all pages of the, uh, the, the Holy Scripture. So I would like to pause for a prayer. I, I, I would like to pray, uh, each one of us, I want you to, to pray that the Lord will enhance our heart and motivate us so that we could understand what is involved in, in the choice that we make every time. So I want to, to say a short prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for who you are to us. By the help of the Holy Spirit, we chose to follow you. We want to give, we wanted to give you our life. We want to be your disciples. We chose to, to do that. And thank you, Lord, for helping each one of us to do that choice. The choice that we'll never regret because we have been attached to you, the life-giving God, the man God, Jesus Christ, who is our Savior, our Lord, and our God, who we expect you to come soon. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for enabling us to make choices at different levels in our lives. And so, Lord, we ask you, the Holy Spirit, to open our eyes, to open our mind, so that we could understand what is involved 
in the, in the choices that we make every time. We thank you, Lord, for creating us as human beings and helping us, Lord, to understand and choose the right thing. We have the Holy Spirit to lead us. We have the Holy Scripture to teach us. And so, Lord, we are blessed for having for having the support and the, the, the lead that we get from the Holy Spirit. And so, Lord, this afternoon, I pray that you touch the hearts of all that are listening to, to this, to this uh, uh, sermon. We thank you and we bless you in Jesus' holy name. Amen. So, from the Christian point of view, the, the scripture, as I said, teaches that our God has given humans the permission to make a free choice. He doesn't actually impose on us. He is not actually forcing us to do this or do that, but he has given us the choice. He has given us the, the permission. He has allowed us and he has, he has also equipped us with that ability to make the right, the right choice. So the first reading, my first reading is in Genesis, in the, in the creation story, in Genesis chapter two, verses 16 and 17. You know about uh, what the Lord has done uh, in the creation story, verses 16 and 17. It says, and the Lord God commanded the man saying, of every tree of the garden, you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat for in the day that you eat, of it you shall surely die. So this, this, is, this is a mandate given to them. They, they, they have been allowed to eat every fruit, everything that they see there, except, except the tree of life, except, uh, except that as, 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 uh, as I have read it in the, of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of God and good and evil, you shall not eat. That is the tag attached to their, <coughs> to their choice. They, they can choose to eat or not to eat, but the freedom was given to them. The freedom was given to them. They were given the gift of choice. So by nature, we humans are mandated to make our own free choice. We have, we have judge, we can make our judgments and we can actually uh, choose freely with no pressure and with no, with no obligation. If we are denied this, there will be strife. You can see this in, 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 in uh, um, different countries. You can see uh, between government and their subjects. You can see um, this between family members and, and uh, uh, this creates unhappiness, okay? So because, because we are given, we are created with this freedom of choice. If somebody denied our, our choice, uh, of, of this freedom of choice, then there is always a strife. We have seen this in the third world. We have seen this in Asia, in Africa, in, in America, because people have been denied of their their choice, their, 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 their freedom of choice, and therefore they struggle. They struggle until they can make um, uh, the, the choice that they went. I am sure you will have experienced this in your life, or you will soon. When somebody, when someone, government, stops you from doing this and that, and then you complain about your choice have been uh, curtailed, and therefore, Therefore, you, you, you overact, you take action, you do this and, and do that in your, in your ability. As we have read in Genesis 2, chapter 2, choice comes with a consequence. It has a consequence. For Adam and Eve, it was eternal separation from God. The Lord God said, for in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. So they received, they received the, the separation from God that they passed it on to their offsprings, including us, as a result of, of their choice. 
So choice has always consequences. You just don't choose and then and that is it. No, it has got consequences. It has got something that will actually come with it. And therefore, we should really very, be very careful about the choices that we, we make. But in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter um, 30, he actually spells it, spells it clearly. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 15 to 19. But I'm going to read um, verse, verse, um, verse 19. So Deuteronomy chapter 30, uh, verses 15 to, to 19. So I'm going to read Deuteronomy 30, verses uh, 19, just 19, rather than 15 to uh, 19. You know the story, and you can read it, of course, in your own time. The Lord God said, verse 19, I call them, I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live. This is a commandment given by God. It was clearly spelled out to all of us. It is spelled out clearly so that we could actually follow. And then instead of, instead of uh, uh, getting punishment, but he said, God said, choose life. There is in front of you life and death. Choose life. So it is, it is my choice. It is their choice to choose life instead of, instead of this. But God has actually uh, allowed humans to choose what they think is the best for them. So as, as, as it is clearly um, uh, shown here, uh, People have choice. People have the freedom to choose. And you can see how important it is. You can either choose life or you can choose death. It all depends on you. There is nothing that forces you. It is, all, it is your own thinking. It is your own conviction that would actually make you choose either life or death. But God has spelled it out clearly that we choose, we choose life. As you well know, Jesus came to ransom the whole world because Adam and Eve chose not to follow the instruction given by, by God. Um, you, 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 can, you can read this in, in First Timothy, First, Second Timothy, I'm sorry. Uh, 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 chapter 2, verses 5 and 6, that the Lord Jesus came to salve, to ransom, to ransom the, the world that we, we have lost through, through uh, because, because of the decision, because of the choice made by Eve, by Adam and, and Eve. So we, we, have, we, have, we have this, uh, the whole world, the whole world actually went away or separated from God by the choice um, made by Adam and Eve. Because the Lord God has actually clearly told them, choose life, choose life. But if you don't choose life, then you are going to be separated from me. That is what the, the commandment actually uh, is, is all about. So we read, we read about the choice Moses made. And again, if you go to Hebrews chapter, um, I, I'm going to read this, chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. <clears throat> Moses, as you remember, was actually um, leading the Israelites uh, to, to go to the Jerusalem and, and leave, leave Egypt, which, which represents um, the uh, 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 country where they were actually s slaves. So in Hebrews um, chapter 11, verses 24, this is what you read. By faith, Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's 
daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasure of sin. Estimating the reproach of Christ, greater riches than their treasures in Egypt, for he looked to the, to the reward. So this is what the Moses did. He actually chose. He chose to suffer with the people of God rather than enjoying life at the palace. He, he chose. He chose to suffer with the people of God. So that was his choice. And this choice was based on his, as you can see here, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasure of sin, esteeming the report of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he looked to the, to the reward. So he looked something that is, uh, that, that actually is uh, full of reward. It is to serve the purpose of God. To be to enjoy what Christ has has done. This is an example that we choose. We choose what is what is what we are going to benefit from. And here Moses chose uh, uh, the, uh, to to uh, fulfill to fulfill um, God's uh, views. Go, go what God has chosen for His people. So. Um, as I said before, um, choice has got a consequence. For Moses, it doesn't matter. It didn't matter. He knew about it. He knew about it. Instead of, instead of enjoying uh, what the pleasure that he gets from the world, from from the the from the Pharaoh, uh, but he he actually wanted to get the, to enjoy the pleasure that he gets from following. Jesus Christ. This is what we did, we did actually when we were when we came to the Lord. We chose to follow the Lord Jesus Christ because we thought and we believed that is better than actually serving the purpose of the the evil. And so Moses actually chose that. I have attempted to give you a general picture involving choice in the Bible. In the New Testament, Luke represents the parable of the prodigal son. You can find this in, in Luke chapter 15. You remember the prodigal son and you remember what he has done and, uh, and what, he, what he has chosen. That is a really good example where uh, he, he has, chose, has chosen, he has chosen what he thinks is, is, is right. So chapter 15, Luke chapter 15, verse 11, to 32. And as I, mean, as I said before, you have heard about this many times, but um, I want to emphasize its application in, 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 terms of, in terms of the choice that people can make and their consequences. So if you read um, um, Luke chapter 15, verses 11 to 32, it tells you about a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided to them his, his livelihood. So here is, here is a choice, you see. And instead of uh, uh, staying and enjoying life in his, in his uh, father's house, he doesn't want to be there. He wants to have the, his share so that he is going to do uh, what, what he wants us to do. So this is, this is where the first choice came in. I want my, my portion. I want to have it. I want to manage it. I don't want you to manage it. I want to manage it. Therefore, give me my share. Give me my portion. This is a request that was made by this prodigal son. And not many days, and so he divided to them his livelihood. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and they wasted his possessions with prodigal living. And, and he chose to have his portion. And the father agreed to give him his portion. 
and this guy, he decided to, to go away from the, 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 the neighborhood of uh, his, his parents, where he grew up, where he actually enjoyed his, his younger life. Now he wants to disappear. Again, this is another choice. I want to go away. I want the money. I want my portion. I want to manage it. I want to go away. I don't want to be seen here. That is what this young guy decided. But when he had spent all there across, there arose a severe famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And to his, to his surprise, he didn't actually get what he expected. There came a famine, and therefore there was a need for him. He, the money probably, he did, not, uh, he did not use it properly. In fact, that's what it said. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and they sent him into his field to feed swine. This, this was actually what was not what was expected for the, that guy. That guy, if he had got the money in his hand, then he can actually um, enjoy it in a way that uh, he, he wants to enjoy. However, there came a famine, and therefore he has to look for something so that he could survive. Again, he has to choose. He chose to go to this place, and he was actually, uh, uh, it was a field to feed swine, and he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pots that he that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. Then he ended up, he ended up eating the food that was prepared for swine. This was not what he dreamt, because he wanted to have the money, and he wanted to, to use it in any way he likes, and the consequence, he, he actually did not have any enough food for him. And therefore, he has to end up eating food prepared not for human beings, but for swine. This is a consequence of his, his choice. But when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have bread in, enough and to spare, and I, I perish with a hunger. And this is again, he came back to his mind. And he's going to make another choice. And instead of remaining in, in, uh, in that place, he wanted to move away. He wanted to go back. He wanted to go back and ask his father for forgiveness. And this is, this is a choice that he, he has made. And, and also, uh, because he has made this choice, he, he was accepted by his father because he said, I will arise and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. This is again a choice that he made. He wanted to be, to be considered as if, as he, not as a son, but as a servant. He chose that. He wanted to be, uh, go to be with, with his father and be with them rather than, rather than um, uh, eating food that has been prepared for, for, a, for a swine. And this is a good example where he has made different choices and these choices, and some of them were really not, not benefiting him and therefore he has to go back and then start all over again uh, his, his life. His father being merciful, his father being kind, he accepted the son back to the family and they were actually rejoicing. If you read um, to, to, to end of the, the, uh, this uh, uh, chapter, you will see what the father has done. And, and this is exactly what, what is the result, what the result of a, a choice can be. It can go bad the consequence could be bad. But the good thing about this guy is he came back to his mind and therefore he chose to go back to, to the family. His choice costed him his dignity, his status, but thanks to the father that he has been accepted back to the family. In truth, we make choices that can have lifelong impacts in our life. We could cite examples. You, we could regret 
that we have joined a certain course. You would say, I wish I could have studied this and that. I wish I could have gone to that school. I wish I could have been friends to such and such. My choice is wrong. I wish this and that. I'm glad that I made this choice. I'm pleased. I'm glad that I'm, I'm, I'm partnering with someone. I'm glad that I have, I have this training or that training. So, so it is, it is, it is a, a choice is a very important element of, element of our life. And we, we regret to, uh, with our choices and we also be happy about the choices that, that I have made. I don't know whether you have, you have, uh, you have um, watched, you have seen my hand. I have got a tattoo on my hand. Maybe you have not seen this. I'm glad that you haven't seen it. However, I chose to have this tattoo on my hand. And it is actually, it bears my name. I, you can imagine. This was years and years and years ago. I was a little toddler when I chose to have a tattoo. And, and this tattoo is simply my name. For what purpose? I don't know. I didn't know. I, I want to remove it, but uh, <laughs> instead of removing, I'm just keeping it because nobody would actually pay attention to that. Okay? So what I want to say is some, some of the choices that we make, it will actually affect us life, lifelong. Okay? So we need to be very careful. You have heard people complain about the choices they made ages ago because they are ripping its consequences now. That is really what happens. It might not be today, it might not be tomorrow, but in the few years to come, the choices that we have made today will affect us. The choices that we have made today will affect you. It has got impact in your life uh, in, the years, in the years to come. Some good and some bad, but you are reaping its consequences. Hence, you need to, call, to seriously consider when you make your choice. Not long ago from now, you will be making a choice of your life. Therefore, you really need to be careful about the choice that you make every time. The, the, good, the thing is, we always make choices. We always make choices. It is amazing. That is our life. You know, this morning, when you came out of your, your house, you chose to wear this or not to wear, to wear it. Or you, 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 just, you chose to, to do something and not to choose uh, to, to, to do it. Okay? So it is, it is a choice in your life is very important and we have to uh, consider it uh, seriously because it is a choice of your life. It will affect your future. It will affect your relationship. It will affect your um, profession. It will affect all your life. And therefore, you have to really uh, con consider uh, carefully your, your choice. So at this stage in your life, and as a, a, a practicing disciples of Jesus Christ, make sure that your choice is within the biblical framework. So that is, that is our starting point. As Christians and as disciples of Jesus Christ, that is where we start. The framework is a, a biblical framework. We, we, we actually base our decision, we base our choice according to the word of God. So that is, that is a, the, the framework that we, we follow as Christians, as disciples of Jesus Christ. Whatever decision, whatever choice we make, it doesn't matter to do this or do that. We should actually refer to the biblical, the biblical frame, framework. Paul, writing in the Corinthians, to the Corinthians, regarding what to eat and, and not to eat, he says in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 6, 12, if you go to Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 6, 12, uh, this, is, this is where the Corinthians had an argument about uh, to eat this or not to eat that, but uh, read 6, 12. 
This is what it says. <clears throat> all things are lawful for me, but all things are not helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. So he, they were talking about food, to eat this food or to eat that food, to be a vegetarian or not, a, not um, uh, or meat eater, doesn't matter. But he said here, all things are lawful for me. You have all the right to do. You have all the right to choose. But what you have to consider is they are not all, they are not useful and they are not actually uh, helping me. That's what he said here. All things are lawful for me, but all things are not helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Okay? So, it is saying here, it is not profitable. The principle is not to be driven by your rights only. It is not, you have got all the rights to eat or not to eat. You have all the right to do this or not that. Nobody is actually interfering with your freedom. However, he's saying it is not profitable. Therefore, the framework, the framework is that, according to the word of God, you have to look the choices that you make. Is it profitable? Does God be glorified? I'm going to say that in a minute. Does, is God glorified by my choice? That is what you have to look, to look at. Again, 1 Corinthians 10, if you look 1 Corinthians 10, uh, that is where he, he actually, Paul, clearly, identifies what, what we have to, uh, how we have to choose. First Corinthians 10, 20, verses 23 and 24. This is what it says. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but not all things edify. Let no one seek his own, but each one the other's well-being. Okay, so whenever we make, we, we make a choice, we have to consider others as well. What will I benefit? What will others uh, get, get out, of, out of this? How does my choice would affect them? So that is how we, whenever we make, we make our choices, we have to look at, at um, uh, the greatest consequences. We might affect others, in particular, in a church framework, you have to look at, at the uh, teaching, teachings of the, the church. Would it affect the church? Would it affect my friends? Would it affect the leaders of the church? Therefore, you have to look at, at all that. So you don't just simply do whatever you want to do. As I said, mentioned before, as I mentioned before, yes, you can choose to do that, but, but you have to consider what would what would others say? How would others care? How would that affect the church? How would that affect my friends? So the framework is always biblical. You have to choose by putting yourself in the biblical framework. You have always to look into, into that. I will go into details in a minute. Let me raise the contentious issue of dressing up yourselves. I'm sure in your life as young people, we have faced the same thing when we were young. We were told by our parents not to wear this. Wear that because it is a holiday. Wear this because it is somebody's coming, etc. I don't know how the practice in this country is. However, however, it is a contentious issue. It is uh, it is an issue that actually uh, runs in, in, in families. What to wear and not what to wear. Remember the many arguments you had with your parents. What does the Bible say? What does the Bible say regarding this? If you go to uh, First Peter, First Peter, chapter three. Here, Peter was talking about married, married women. Okay, um, First Peter, um, chapter three, verses three to four. Do not let your adornment be 
mainly outward, arranging the hair, wearing gold, or putting on fine apparel. Rather, let it be the hidden person of the heart with the incorruptible beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is very precious in the sight of God. That is how you have always to look at, at uh, what you are wearing and what you are not wearing. It is actually, I'm, I'm really happy to, 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 um, to, to read this again. It said, uh, the hidden person of the heart. That is exactly what it should be. It is a hidden person. It is a reflection of what you have in your heart. If you are of a worldly type, if you want to have more of what the world gives, then that is reflected by what you do. But if you give your life completely to Christ and completely to the Bible's teaching, then you know what you have to do. I'm, I'm really, really... Uh, uh, I recommend this word, this phrase for you. The hidden person of the heart. That is where we have to look. Hidden person. What does this hidden person tell you to do? The hidden person will always tell you to do what actually glorifies your God. In, fa in fact, Paul in, in uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 31, it said, do all to the glory of God. So whatever you are going to do, you do it for the glory of God. You say to yourself, you ask yourself, does this glorify God? Where does it glorify God? Is it glorifying uh, my, my beauty? Is it glorifying my heart's desire of the world little thing? Or is it really glorifying God? That is what the question should be. It is not what you wear this or you wear that. It is rather whether it glorifies God or not. Now, you might ask, how is God not glorified by, by what, what I wear? Excuse me, um, you need to know that you can actually offend others. You can actually, uh, you, 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 don't, you don't show you don't show the changing power of the Holy Spirit in your life. Remember, we are walking testimonies, walking testimonies to, to, the, to the gospel because we have got Jesus in our life, and that is how we testify, okay? The glory, of, the glory of God, the love of God to others by what we do, whatever we do. That is that has to glorify God, not not only by talking, but but whatever we do, we have always to check whether we are actually glorifying God or not. Please underline this: all your underta undertakings should actually be focused on whether it glorifies God or not. Think about it. Think about it. Okay. You all, uh, always ask yourself, does this glorify God? Does this glorify God? Is this, uh, is, does this show the love of God? Does this show the mercy of the Lord? Does this show what God has, uh, has uh, for, for other people, his mercy, his kindness? Does it show? Therefore, you always do things according, according to that. How can you... Um, do this as a young person. How can you do this? Um, when I say this, how can you choose whether this will glorify God or not? How? What is there any help? Is there any help that you actually call upon so that you 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 uh, will be helped to glorify God in whatever you are going to do? So as young Christian. How can you attend this? How can you attend this? Well, I'm going to uh, um, suggest few things. Number one, by allowing the Holy Spirit to work in your life. Get experience with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will actually help you. The Holy Spirit is there for us to help us. So experience 
experience the Holy Spirit. Seek to be filled with the Holy Spirit. This is a promise of God. You can read this in Acts um, uh, 2, uh, verse 17. Acts 2, this is actually a quote from Joel. Acts 2, 17, you all remember. Joel said, in the last days, I'm going to pour out my Holy Spirit, my spirit on young people, on adults, and, uh, and young people. 217, this is what it says. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out of my spirit in all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Uh, your old men shall dream dreams. This is the promise of God for all people, not only for the people uh, uh, during Joel's time, but it is for all people now. Now, that is what Peter said when he, uh, when he um, was confronted by the people in the Pentecostal day, okay? In the day of Pentecost. Therefore, it is for me, it is for you, it is for all the generation of all human beings who actually followed God, who actually gave their life to God. This is what is expected to, to experience, to be filled by the Holy Spirit. So experience that, seek that. This is for us, this is for me. And therefore, I seek to be filled by the Holy Spirit. I, I, I expect or I ask the Lord God to fill me all day, every time, every time. It is not for once in a life, but it is every day, every time. Experience, experience the Holy Spirit. Then you will not have any question whether to do this or do that because the Holy Spirit will actually teach you, shows you, guides you, okay? Walk closely to God and draw strength from him. Listen to the Holy Spirit talking to you. Give him attention. Don't argue with others about what you wear, etc., but listen to him, what he says in your heart about your choice. He always wants you to glorify God in your choice. That is a desire of the Holy Spirit. That is why the Lord God actually fills us with the Holy Spirit. He wants to guide us so that we can do things, we can choose things that will actually glorify God. So, please, I encourage you very much, seek to be filled by the Holy Spirit. Experience the Holy Spirit as he is available for each one of us. He is available for those who, so who seek him and who want him. Next, study and read the Word of God on a regular basis. The Holy Spirit uses the Word to remind you what the Lord wants from, from you. You can read this from John chapter 14, when Jesus said, I'm going, but I'm going to send the Holy Spirit so that, so that he could remind you what I have said, what I have told you. Okay? So... Um, so you read the word of God. You read the word of God on a regular basis. When you read the word of God on a regular basis, it is through the word that the Holy Spirit will talk to you, will speak to you, so that you could choose things that would actually glorify God. You can't, you can't be led by the Holy Spirit by not reading the word of God. You need to read the Word of God on a regular basis. It is not like reading a verse and then go to your class or do this or do that. No. Take time. Set time. There are time for you to eat. There are time for you to sleep. There are time to play and chat and, of course, uh, the, 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 the Google and all this internet. The, you, you set time for that, don't you? So do the same thing with the Word of God. Set time so that you could sit down Read and listen, and listen what the Holy Spirit speaks, talks to you in your, in your heart. So make time to do this. Nobody will make time to do this for you. It is you who is going to make time to do this. It is on a regular basis. I don't know what time is convenient for you, but choose a convenient time. Choose a convenient uh, um, spot where you can actually sit down or kneel down and read the word of God. 
ask the Lord to speak to you and, and guide you and give you the support, the help that you need. Unless you do this, you will not survive this uh, world of technology where things are just, they are not normal for us. However, we can only, we can only um, get the victory if we attach ourselves to the word of God and the Holy Spirit. Make your friendship with God's people and spend time praying on a regular basis. This is another thing that you have to do. Your fellowship with others, fellowship with Christian brothers and sisters, to, to pray, to have time together, to share the word of God together, to share your experience, okay? So that is the thing that you have to do. By doing this, you, you then choose things that will actually glorify God. And therefore, I very much encourage you, keep your friendship with God's people and, and spend time praying on a regular basis. When I say praying, it is not like a one minute prayer. It is not like a two minute prayer. Again, set time, set time, where you can kneel down or sit down or in, in a corner, in a place, in a convenient place, so that you could actually call upon the name of the Lord and worship him and give him the glory and tell him how you love him. Tell him how you appreciate what he's doing, what he's doing for you. Remember, the protection of the Lord is on us. The Lord has protected us. Therefore, we do things. We are able to do things. Otherwise, otherwise, no, it's not, it's not like your, your, your strength or your power that is making you do this. It is the Holy Spirit. It is, a, it is the word of God. It is God who is actually helping us to do that. Therefore, uh, set time to regularly um, uh, pray with friends and, and worship the Lord. Get involved in the life of your church. The church needs you. It is you who are, who is going to do things in the future. So get involved. The church is yours because the Lord has placed you here. He has positioned you here. Get involved. There is evangelism for you to be involved. There is prayer time that uh, uh, you, you can be involved. There is teaching. You can teach the younger people. I know some of you do that. However, get involved. Get involved. And I suggest that you have a mentor, a mentor that you can pray with, a mentor that can guide you. You can ask a church, you can ask the, your ministers to assign you to a certain person who they think can be a mentor. Therefore, this is, this is important. You can pray with your mentor, you can pray with your ministers who can actually guide you and, and make you do the right, the right choice. In conclusion, I want to read Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 to 10. Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 to 10. By doing this, by doing this, by doing this, then we can actually make the right choice. We'll not be bothered by, by our church. We'll not be bothered by making the wrong decision. If we do what I'm going to read now. The Bible teaches us that from verse 6, Colossians chapter 2, verse 6. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus, the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. Beware that anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit, according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him, who is the head of all principality and power. So if we do this, if you, if you actually uh, uh, follow the instruction given by by what I have read, then you can actually make the right decision. You can make the right choice. And this choice will actually help you go through. So 
if you make if you make a, a mistake in your choice, then that will actually affect uh, your your life. Not only your your temporal life, but your life uh, all the time. Because you always say, "I wish I could not have I could have not chosen that." So to avoid that, as Paul advised us, you, you are rooted in Jesus Christ in the teaching of the Lord, and that will that will help you actually choose the right thing. Uh, in doing this, you will have a clear picture of your choice and its consequences. Remember, your choice affects you, others, and your future. So we need to be very careful about your choice. Consider, consider your choice that it will not affect others. It will not affect you um, throughout your, your life. Affect you positively if you make the right choice. But if you make the wrong choice, that will affect you the whole of your life. The Bible says in Ephesians 4.30, don't grieve the Holy Spirit. If you make the wrong choice, if you make the wrong choice, you are, you are actually acting against, against your teacher, against the Holy Spirit, who actually dwells in you, guiding you, talking to you. And therefore, Paul says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Don't choose to grieve the Holy Spirit. Okay? How can you grieve the Holy Spirit? By, by not listening to him. By not obeying the word of God. And therefore, whatever you do, whatever you do, that is what the Bible says. Do it for the glory of God. Whatever you wear, for example, if you are talking about dressing yourselves, be careful. You don't just put your clothes as you get it, but you say, would this, would this be appropriate for me as a Christian to wear? Would this, be, would this be a proper thing to say? Would this be how I'm going to answer to others, to my, to my um, seniors? What is the best way? What is that pleases God? And therefore, you are not actually um, um, doing things by, by, by accident, you know? Something is in front of you, you just do it. No, that's not the way you do. You think, you pray, you consult the word of God because you want to do things that will glorify God. Otherwise, you are grieving the Holy Spirit. I hope I have said something that you would benefit out of, out of it. And I hope you would actually put this in practice in your life, in your daily life. While you go to university, while you do things, and while you, you communicate with others, you would probably consider your choice. You would always ask yourself, am I doing the right thing? Am I listening to the Holy Spirit? Guys, careful. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Thank you very much. I'm going to pray and finish my talk. Let us all pray. Thank you, Lord, so that you have helped us to make the right decision. In our lives, we have made the right decision, that is to follow you. This is by the whole help of the Holy Spirit. And so, Lord, we want to remain in you. We want to walk with you, rooted in your word, and listening to the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, I pray that you bring my brothers and sisters to the experience of the Holy Spirit. I pray, Lord, that you fill them with the Holy Spirit. Help them, Lord, seek the Holy Spirit to be filled, to be filled and practice what he has been promised in your word. We thank you, Lord, for this time together. I pray, Lord, that you would help each one of us go through this new year as we do all uh, the things that we want to do. I pray, Lord, for the success of the young people in our church so that they could actually get, achieve what they want to achieve. And thank you, Lord, for all this. We bless you. We bless you, Lord, for the parents. We bless you, Lord, for the, the ministers that help our young people. We thank you, Lord, that you are with us. You guide us and you, you, you be with us and you will help us, Lord, do things that would glorify you all in our lives. Lord, 
help us not to grieve you in whatever action we are going to uh, take. We bless you and we thank you. We, we ask you uh, to bless uh, our church, to bless our, our sisters and brothers in the church, and we pray, Lord, that you would, you would help us glorify you in our, in, our, in our undertakings. We ask all this in the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God bless you.